Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Google have recently renamed their main AI from Bard to Gemini. So this happened a few weeks ago, and today what we're going to do is explore Gemini, and in particular Gemini Advanced, which is the paid offering of this AI service. Bard had some strengths and weaknesses. We're going to see whether some of those have been improved, and just give it a bit of a test out on a few different things. I'm going to test it on coding. I'm going to see whether it is still good at summarizing YouTubes. I'm going to get it to do a little bit of brainstorming and writing and research, and also look at a couple of the weaknesses that it has had in the past. Starting here on the updates page, they've been making really regular updates. One of the ones that's just come in the past few days is the addition of Python code, where not only will it write the code, but it will run some of it as well. So we'll have a test of that. We can also see there in the updates, the renaming and the release of the advanced version. So let's jump into some examples. My first example here is just to see whether it is still working well for summarizing YouTube. And this was really one of the big advantages that Bard had over the other LLMs is its ability to be able to work natively within other Google infrastructure. This was one of the earlier ones, and we can see that I asked it just to summarize. I gave it the YouTube link, and we can see that it's given me some bullet points. Bullet points are pretty good in terms of describing the video. It was actually one of my videos. But this is really nice, particularly if there's a video and you want to try and extract some information out of it, and it's a particularly long video, then getting it to summarize it like this is a really, really handy feature. This alone, I think, makes Gemini part of the suite of AI that I would continue to use regularly. Next up, I gave it a simple coding task. So with Bard, I found that it was much worse than ChatGPT for writing code. And so I've got this example here in Python, and then we'll jump to an example in R as well. It's a pretty straightforward example. It's very common in a lot of data science courses that you might get someone to do this. And so we can see nice simple prompt and it's produced pretty much bang on. It's not a, not a hard coding problem, but it has nailed it. Anytime they produce code, they have a little warning here. But we'll notice there's a play button as well. So when we hit the play button, it will attempt to run. And I've found depending on what it is that you're trying to run will depend on how successful it is. So we'll hit the play. And we'll just see whether there's been an update since I tried this the other day. And no, there's not. So we can see code output, but it will give you text, but it seems to have issues with graphs. Uh, not the end of the world, though, because when we come down, we'll see that we can still get at that graph that it has made. With the coding, we can see an explanation here. So it explains step by step what was used, what the code means. Really nice and clear. If I was teaching this... There is my explanation of doing a cluster analysis of that data set right there, nice and easy. And then I was just able to use a prompt, show me the plot that that code was generated. And there is my cluster analysis plot with the three clusters. So just as I would have done myself. We can see at the bottom there, show the code behind this result as well. So if it has produced something for you uh, and we hadn't explicitly got the code, we can get it to then generate and give us the code to be able to use. So this is very powerful. And this is a big step forward for Google because they were, it really felt a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of the coding. Um, I definitely found ChatGPT to be much better at doing coding tasks for me than Bard had been. Next up, I got it to produce some R code to make a shiny dashboard. And this was something that I have previously asked ChatGPT to do. ChatGPT could successfully do it, Bard could not. And so we have a look at the code that it's produced, and so I've run this code and it worked perfectly. No edits needed, first time, ran the code and produced exactly what I asked for in my prompt. And then it gave the nice explanations here as well. So really nice and clear, even down to how to run this inside of RStudio. So that's really helpful for someone that's new to coding. From here, I decided to try and challenge it. So I have tried previously to get ChatGPT and Bard to be able to scrape data. And in particular, this was one that I wanted because I've done some previous research on what's called the relative age effect, where I wanted the date of birth of professional athletes to look for some particular patterns. 
So I've asked it for the R code to scrape the web and it says, no, sorry, I can't. It gives an explanation of what the challenges are for this and it offers up some alternatives. It gives a code snippet that would get you going if you wanted to try it, uh, keeping in mind the challenges that it had highlighted as well. And so what makes this impressive is not that it did the task, because it actually failed it, but the way that it explained what it tried to do, how it didn't quite work. When I tried the same prompt, and even much more detailed prompts in ChatGPT to try and do this, ChatGPT gave me code that looked on the surface pretty reasonable, but in fact was garbage. It didn't work, it didn't do what it was supposed to, and it just pretended that it did. It just said, here's the code that you would need to run to scrape these websites, get this information, and in fact, it just didn't work, and no amount of prompting could get it there. It was a fairly hard problem, but we can see, and so then I said, well, can you turn that sample code, because it'd give me some generic sample code, and again, lots of explanation, few little code snippets, didn't solve it, gave, if this was a real problem, gave me some things that I could work on, or work with, and in fact, it almost got there. It got closer than ChatGPT did, even though it's saying that I can't really do this. So I was quite impressed with that, and particularly how it explained what the code was, explained what it tried to do, and explained why it didn't quite work. The other really nice thing was at the bottom here, it said, well, give me your sample code that you've written, and I'll see if I can improve it. So that's really nice as well. It did a breakdown, it explained what I was doing, it suggested a few little edits, Again, not quite there, but a long, long way from where it was. And I would say even, even a tiny bit better than ChatGPT. Then I decided to pose a few different research and brainstorm questions for it. Uh, Bard was pretty reasonable with this already. And so I asked about AI research of AI use amongst general practitioners. Started off by saying, well, actually there isn't much research. And that's why I'm doing the research project on it here in Australia. But it did run down and gave some really good bullet points describing each of these, where we might look for emerging research, and some other considerations. Uh, didn't give any references, and so this was the first point where I kind of got a little bit suspect, because I said, can you provide the references? And we can see there's a couple in here where it says invalid URL removed. And for some of these titles, when I searched for them, I couldn't find them. So perhaps a little bit of hallucinating, though I was a little bit surprised. I don't know if I can say disappointed, it definitely picked out some real articles and relevant useful articles, but certainly as with all LLMs, you need to do your due diligence. Don't just assume that what it's giving you is correct. So you can see there's another one, definitely searched for that one and I just couldn't find it. So not convinced that it exists. In amongst there, there were some good points as well. Asked it to do some brainstorming, 10 ideas for research projects in this area. It gave those split up into some different categories that all looked pretty good and sensible as well. And actually probably a little bit more specific than what ChatGPT has given me in the past for a similar type of question. So then I came back to this question of uh, rugby player birth dates and debut dates. And I thought I would change tact. Instead of getting it to give me some code to go and get it myself, I thought... Maybe it can just do a web search and it can generate this. And here it was really interesting because we had a fail, but it was not just a pretend here's what the solution is. It admitted that it failed. It identified the challenges of why it struggled to do this. It suggested where to go and get the information. And so I persevered for a little while with things like here. You can see that I said, give me the best possible list. And so you can see it started. Uh, when it is pulling data for you, it will give you a link so you can actually generate a Google Sheet with this in, which is nice. And then I set it going. It said, oh, I can go and get this for you. I thought, okay, great. Would you like me to proceed in creating this list? Yes. And then there was nothing for a while. And then we get these few with, I'm not sure about this, player X on the end. And it said, oh, this could take a while. And it started asking me a few prompting questions. But then it said, oh, this might take a little while. And so I just left it. And then we went through and it said, oh, this might take a couple of hours. 
and then I waited a few hours and then I said where's the table and it said oh actually it's going to take longer than I thought and we went through this it was and you can see here it's been 16 hours it was almost like working with a real intern uh, which is probably not what you want you're looking for this tool to replace your interns I was kind of split between being a little bit annoyed because it just was saying I'm going to go and do this and then it was not succeeding but it did seem to be making an earnest effort and so it would give me these tables with little bits and pieces of information and it actually identified on the other page itself that this is not necessarily the best way of doing this if you had an API access into the relevant database the, the smarter ways of doing this I was just being a little bit lazy but also a little bit curious about what Gemini can and can't do the fact that it has that power of Google behind it, uh, I was hoping that its its ability to search and find things uh, and to be able to compile them might be a little bit better. Okay, so moving on to the last feature, and I think this is maybe one of the most powerful along with their YouTube summarization. And again, is the fact that Gemini can see into your Google Apps if you let it. So I just, out of curiosity, asked it to summarize my emails from today. Turned out I'd only had two emails and they were the ones from Gemini. Uh, so I did identify that they are going to start charging me for this. I'm currently got a trial until April. Would I pay $33 a month? Not yet. Probably not. Uh, I think it probably needs to get a fraction better. But that was, it was pretty good. It did summarize those. So then if we come down, and I'm going to probably have to redact a few bits and pieces here. But I asked it to summarize the emails from the past couple of weeks. And I was pretty impressed here. I'm sure I received more than 20 emails. So I think it had some kind of filter there. It was not counting advertising and spam type emails. So it was really, it was summarizing the emails, which would be the ones that I would also read. And so we can see that it splits up into different headings tells me that there's a meeting coming up, tells me uh, about the subscription, that was the email earlier, there was a bill, there was a few different bits and pieces, really actually nice summarize, summaries here, um, I will need to cover up a couple of little bits and pieces, uh, but I'll try and leave enough that you can see coming further down, and so it's gone through, flagged all the different bits and pieces, particularly the relevant ones where there's uh, invoices and payments and things like that, uh, this is really good. Uh, even even flagging where I've sent myself emails, reminding myself of things. So this was pretty impressive. I thought then I would give a go of uh, Google Drive, see what it could do in terms of looking into there. And in fact, here I was probably I was pretty vague. Success profile PDF shared with me. So that was sitting in my Google Drive, and it found it and it summarized it really nicely. Here's where it is in the Google Drive, here's the PDF, and here's the key information. I didn't dive deeper to get it to make this longer, shorter, change the focus, uh, but being able to access and ask things related to your Gmail and the documents on your Google Drive I think is really, really powerful. And so I think particularly if you're using the, the Google Suite for any kind of business application, then this is going to be really handy. There is going to be a business or enterprise version of this as well. But anyone that's using their Google Drive, their calendar, things like that, being able to get summarizations, uh, being able to hunt things out, I think is really useful. So Gemini, this is the advanced version. I didn't do any image testing. I've done a video previously with Bard where we saw it was a bit hit and miss. There's also been a fair bit of media coverage in the past couple of days with it not being particularly good at generating pictures of people. And in fact, I believe they've shut that function off again to try and solve that. But big improvement in the coding. The writing is yeah, as, as good as it was. The ability to get at the, the G Suite stuff, I think, is what really sets it apart from some of the other competitors. So I suspect if you are in a similar position to me, you may have received an offer of a free trial. Definitely encourage you to take it up, do a bit of experimentation yourself. Even if you're not using the advanced, using the basic version, still pretty good. It will be able to do pretty much everything I did today. I think the main difference in terms of that functionality is just the 
power of the model that they're using in behind it. So you may get slightly worse results, but still should be in the ballpark. So that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. I'll be back soon with more videos on R, stats, AI, research, and random stuff.